How are we ladies and gentlemen? Today I am going to be working on this beautiful piece of crystal opal. Of course this is it with the cross but if I sneak away this thumb and this finger you'll see it's absolutely amazing and Julian dropped off an entire parcel of stuff equally if not better than this and you can see that in a previous video I'll link it in the description all that kind of stuff pop it up on screen and yeah, we're going to hope that this one comes out moderately clean. Of course, you can see this bottom edge here is a little bit potchy, but anywhere there isn't potch, it's just beautiful, just A-grade crystal opal. Absolutely beautiful. This one's got every color under the sun, so this one is a full-on multicolored disco lights kind of, kind of piece, whereas some of the other ones are a bit more concentrated in one color or another. So we're going to scrub this one up just under the skin and see how we go. I won't be hitting this one with the Sintered Diamond just because it's really just starting to sneak through anyway. So we'll uh, skip that and go straight for the Nova Points. I'll probably actually use a tip that I use very rarely and that is this Green Nova. So with that being the plan, I think we'll dive straight in and I'll get this mounted and we'll spin it up. All right, so we've just taken off the crust with the 60 grit green Nova. And now we can use our superhuman vision and just shine a torch into this bell knight with any fossil you want to do this because shape is the most important thing. Hunting for color is all well and good, but if you completely destroy the fossil, then there's really, then it's just any other opal. So you want to try to balance between revealing the color and also getting rid of the imperfections. And right now I'm looking at some of these and you can see here the dark shadowing of the of the sand going into the Bellum Knight. Now that is not good. It means these ones are not going to clean up quite as well. Some of the finer lines, like that one, are a little bit more possible to get rid of. But a lot of this looks like it's going to have to stay in. You can see right here where my finger is, the point of the the plug, the sand plug even though this one's pretty empty. And at this point, it means I'm gonna have to leave a lot of these in, especially this area here. Otherwise you'll lose, you'll dig halfway into the core just to get rid of them. And at that point, you might as well just call it a normal opal. And Julian wants these to have their shapes retained. So we're just gonna have to finish off the shaping and then polish it up as is. It's gonna have sand in it, but at the end of the day, it's still going to look very nice. So let's get the Novas spinning again and finish it up. All right, and here we are. So you can see it's got fantastic color, but this thing has serious sand problems. And I haven't done the usual and gone ahead and polished it with something like my cerium oxide. I haven't done that because I want to talk to Julian about this piece. There's some sections that I think if he's happy for me to actually carve in a little bit more, I can clean it up a bit. I mean, this area here where you can see the best of the color and all of this sand, that sand is not going to disappear unless you grind all the way to the core, which is sad. There's also this here, and I have had a lot of fun, fun with this. You can see up here, normally, if this was a really nice piece with no sand, I would have changed the shape of this end completely. But because of all the sand, I decided to really keep it like it would be straight out of the ground. So really I'm just focusing on removing sand that can be removed without changing the shape too much. 
And there are some parts, like in here, this kind of area, that can neaten up, but I'd have to grind in a lot deeper. This here is never going to disappear. So here you can see that there's like this, this bed of sand under here, and then towards the guts here, it actually launches all the way up, and you could see that with the torch. So it reaches all the way up, and some of it, I reckon, joins in with this. So there's sand all through the middle of it, but you can see in most areas where there's colour, it's really nice. It is really nice, and I could just shine it up a little bit more as is. But I think there are some areas I could work on, and if this was my stone, I'd actually do a little bit of experimenting with a toothpick or a skewer and start trying to clean out some of this sand. Even though you're, you're not going to change the overall shape, but you are going to have gouges and valleys inside. But I think it might actually look kind of cool. So, I don't know, I'll talk to Julian about it. Because you can see, it's an, it's an amazing piece. It's just really troubled with sand. And I've even polished up a little bit in the inside here, but I've left the main core of the plug in there. It goes down to about here. And it goes to a really sharp point, so it's not that big a plug. But this area here, even though it is pretty fragile, I just like the look. I haven't had much of a chance to do something. Like, it, it actually looks like it's still sharp, but it really isn't. It's nicely rounded and polished. And I thought it looked very organic and very cool because once I saw the color coming in here, the color on the inside is actually better than on the outside here because there's also sand all through here. And that area there won't clean up all that well. Further down, it is more surface level and I could carve it down, but then it gets really thin. And at that point, you kind of do what I would have done if this was a perfect gem and just cut straight across here probably and just forgot about this end. But I like the look of it on the inside, and I wanted to go for this really organic, sharp-looking dagger end. Because that's how it came out of the ground, and I thought, for this one, just because it's not pure colour, we'll keep it looking like it came straight out of the ground, though we know they never come out this, this shiny. And this hasn't even had a metal oxide. So yeah, unfortunately, we'll leave it there for now. I'll have a chat with Julian. I've got other pieces that I'm working on anyway, so he doesn't even need to re reply pretty quickly. I've got plenty of work to keep going, so I'll keep going, and you may see this one back on the channel in the near future. I'd say one and a half down, and I think we still had another four more to go. Two of those are already under the knife, so let's keep going, and I'll see you in the next one.